Welcome back everyone to Phoenix Reborn. So since last episode I've been a bit busy finishing off the AE sorting system here and I've been doing a bit of building here and there and if we start with the E2 bit so let's get by here now we'll start with this bit here I've added in a lever here to turn this off as the way I built my sorting system I didn't realize that it would use so much power and I'll show you how much power that is using now so let me just pop in my bag here a second and grab myself a network tool so if I right click this on here now you will see how much power I am using yes I'm using 11.5 MRF which is redstone flux or MJ and jewels. If we go AE, that's 578. So that's quite use a bit of power. Hello. Oh, sorry, I was looking at the wrong one there. Yeah, it uses 300 AE. That's quite a lot, actually. Let's have a look at that is in. Let's see which one is it redstone flux so that's 524 redstone flux so that's a heck of a lot actually <laughs> i didn't realize how much it was at the time but uh, i had to find another way of fixing that problem up so if you notice my cell down here it is holding charge and there's a reason for that but i'll get to that in a moment Let's get. Oh, it's a bit laggy. I think it's night time outside. So if we get up top here now, and you'll see what I've been up to. So there's massive wires and stuff. So if we go in the middle right here. So this is where all the controlling stuff goes on. So I've got a ring of controllers here. If you remember, it was over that side last episode. Well, I've moved it more central so that I can link all these wires in. So I've got all these cables from the Jabba barrels with storage buses on the back of them. And they all connect to these wires. And that's what's using all the power, really. It's all those storage buses. And I managed, also managed to fix up the channel issue from last episode. So let me show you that. There's a little hint of what power is over there. I'll get back to that. So if we pop down here now. So the way I worked out to sort my channels out was to put some covers in here. And I divided up the cables so that most of the channels are getting pushed to the top here. And that gave me all those 20 channels. So that's fixed that issue and I repeated this over the other side as well. Right, so let's see where this power is coming from at the moment. Because I want to work on getting myself a reactor in the future. But for now, I set up those solar power uh, panels outside. And I've got a couple here. I've been slowly upgrading them to the top version. And I want to get them all set up like the 64 solar generator and it's going to take quite a lot so let me pop upstairs and show you that now where is it there it is no oh, wrong one up i want to go and here we are on the top level here now as you can see i've uh, added walls and some glowstone glass just to give yourself a bit of safety up here i don't know if i'm actually gonna go with the glowstone glass like that but now nah, we'll see what happens I think anyway let's get back to what I was talking about so let's give it a little trip for you so here we are what I've done is set up two of these guys here with some solar generators and I've got them wired up in such a way that they only oh charge up <laughs> that was a creeper by the way thank you creeper uh, as I was saying yeah they only charge 
up my battery at night. And a good thing this pack has got creeper blast protection on, otherwise I would have lost all those solar generators. So as you can see, these ones store 800,000 and this one stores 64. Or six, is that 6 million or 64? I can never work that out. But yeah, that's looking good. So what my aim is to upgrade all these to these top-notch solar generators. No more creepers now. No. So yeah, that's looking good so far and it's working all right so far but I need to upgrade my battery downstairs so I'm gonna have to do that now in order to make these solar generators it requires a lot of botania plants and doing that all manually was gonna take ages so I worked out the way of automating that process so let me go downstairs here a second and grab some seeds. Now if we head over to the apothecary over here we'll take a look at how I've set things up here. You notice I've added a few extras here so what I've done is I have added in an open crate up here, a iron chest at the back and an advanced item collector. Now the advanced item collector is set up to collect day blooms and if we pop behind the scenes what I've done is added a Steve's machine inventory manager in here and I've cabled up a few stuff up here and that's all set up for redstone on a hopper which is just over there I don't know if you can quite see it there it is there believe me and uh, what that oop let me get out here so let's go around the front a second so what is happening here let me just show you an example first and you will see what I mean so we've got oh I need some seeds I, I've got a yellow so let's go grab some yellow seeds a sec uh, petals a second Oh, yellow, there they are. Let's put those seeds away, I didn't need them. Now, what happens here is, if we put in, say, one, two, three, four. I want to take my ring off because it sucks up all the goodies. Let's throw in them. Like that. Oop. And you may note this. Yeah, it's been automated and getting collected. So let me just put in a stack of them and you get a better example of that. Now as you can see, it drops one seed, two yellow petals, one orange and one light blue. And that produces your day blooms. And it works like that. And I set it up for a, a five second interval. Otherwise, the apothecary would get filled up with petals. Because it didn't have enough time to drop everything. Now, I'll leave that run a second. And we'll go on the back and I'll show you how that works. It's quite simple, really. So, what I've done is here. First of all, we've got ourselves a trigger set for 5 seconds. And then on the condition we go for the iron chest and I'm looking for some petals now we've got if you remember there's two yellow petals so you right click that to bring up that menu and a seed so once it detects any of that combination of things it will go to true and the input chest is the iron chest And I set it up like that, just for the sake of it. And uh, it's set up for output to the same, with a whitelist. And I've got an emitter here to 
turn the hopper on and off otherwise it just spams loads of petals into it as it's the only way and it works fine I was messing around with other bits here so I probably can delete these later on but it's quite easy to do really and the emitter was set for yeah set five blocks away so I oh yeah shift use shift so adjacent blocks and I've got a torch wired up to that I think yeah so I've wired that up onto the stone right next to it as I couldn't get the torch to go on there and that's connected to the hopper and that stops the hopper from dropping everything that goes into the hopper and as you can hear it is still working I, was, I thought that was going to mess up for a second there. So let me just go in there now. And look, we've got loads of day blooms without me having to do anything. And it's just run out as I went there as well. Perfect. Well, my base ain't looking too bad from out here. And I wanted to clear this mountain right next to it. So as I mentioned, I'm going to show you how we've done that now. And it's quite easy. I was messing around with destruction catalyst and this thing you've got to be really careful with as I nearly wiped out half my base with it <laughs> so it was uh, I uh, accidentally clicked here and nearly wiped out half my E2 system so I had to rewire a few things but after initial problems I worked out how to work this properly so I've got to be really careful with that so when I'm not using it put it out of my inventory otherwise it'll have a problem so let's put that back there so what I want to do is clear out this here and I've done half of it as you can see and the reason why that is because I want to make this area look a bit nicer and it'd be a bit more zombie proof and I'll get all those resources as well, which is going to be handy. Oh, I didn't clean up my inventory actually. Let's, let's sort that out. So, what I did was went to my project E table, transportation table, made myself some of this fuel, which fuels that. And let's get the good spot here. Let me. Ooh, let's get a bit choppy there. So all, I did, all I've been doing is just going like that. Uh, it just really crazily clears everything out. Just like that. So I got lots and lots. Oh, what did I get? A mystical purple flower. Now if I keep doing this, it will keep doing it. However, I won't be picking up any of these items. Let me just clear this side and you'll see what I mean now. There you go, that's nice and clear, apart from that bit there. And any items I can't pick up are turned into these little matter balls. I think they're called matter balls. And they contain all the items that I couldn't pick up. And one thing I got to make is a an ender pouch I think which will make things a lot easier to do this uh, once we clear out all that it should look a lot nicer now if we go around the other side oh, I better get some food that's why I'm so slow I'll just let that a minute thank you so I don't want to do the whole mountain just up to say here I'll probably mould them out a little bit more down I'm not sure how far back this goes actually I better go and check let's pop up here I don't think it goes too far really so what we're going to do is go to about say yeah, about here somewhere. Whoa. Be careful. Yeah, so we want to level this off a bit more. And I'll probably cut it off here. 
Um, bring this top bit down. I don't know. We'll have to work on it, actually. Right, so... A bit of space now, thank God. So, we want to make one of these ender things here. I'm going to leave it on the blank option. So, let's make that now. So, how do we make one of these guys? So, in the pouch. So, there it is. One end pouch. In the storage. Just check something in a second. Yeah, that's right. So, to make one of these, we're going to need... Well, that's quite easy, really. Two flames, three leather, and the pearls. See if I can remember that now. Did I... You know, I haven't got any end pearls, but there, have I? All right. Let's do it the easy way. So, one pearl. One of them. One bit of wool. Uh, some powder. Okay, maybe I got the powder over here. For them. And what else do we need? Ooh, what's oh, I'll look at that in a minute. i just seen something tasty. And some leather. Did I put any leather in here? Yeah, one, two, three. Let's remember let's memorize that. I'll grab one back. Okay, let's make that item. Nice and simple. There you go. Right. Now let's test that a second. Let's grab say a load of that. That'll do. Right, and then all I gotta do is just throw that in. Bam. Gets thrown back in there. Perfect. So I'll carry that round with me. Now I wish there was a way of automatically throwing everything into this pouch. But at least we can do stuff from afar. Uh, I don't know the it all depends on the range I can do it at. So, so we'll have to test that. Right, let's grab that. It's a bit better. Right, let's put some stuff away here a second. Two of them. Right. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, let's get up there and let's do a bit more clearing in a minute. And once we've cleared that away, we can start developing the land a bit more. And one thing I want to build. So let me run down here. So. Above here is where that clear area should be. Now if you look on the map, you can see all this area here. And down here I want to build a blood altar. I've got to build a tier 5 eventually. So I want the land above this to be clear as I want it to have a bit of sky above it. So I'm going to put, I'm going to put some kind of glass dome or ceiling here, not too sure. Um, we're going to come down overlocking the blood altar and as you can see I've still got a lot of work to do. So I'm going to get on with that now and clear that mountain away and when we come back we'll see how much I've done of it. Well, I've been quite busy using my destruction catalyst. Uh, I've used up all the fuel, and you may notice I had about 30 odds. So let's do the big reveal now of how much I've cleared away. So let's have a look. Oh boy, that took some clearing out. So let me just get out here now. So as you can see, I've cleared away a heck of a big chunk of land by there. And once I clean up this mess by here, it'll look a lot better. So, I'm not sure if I'm going to lower this down a little bit. But let's go over this side here. So, I'm thinking we might go back a little bit further and have a mound going up there. So, I'll probably develop this into another slight 
Banky Hill or something. Yeah, so I'll probably do that along there. And here we'll build up another wall along the side. As I want this to come out a little bit because I want to get the farms underneath to be a bit bigger. So I might bring this out to here. Not too sure, but the only problem with that is we've got the Steve's stuff down below. So I'll have to think about what I'm going to do there. But yeah, that looks good so far. And one problem we did have clearing out all that was, of course, storage. So let me show you my temporary solution for that. Hop over here a second. So I went back downstairs and I've been upgrading my barrels. As you can see, I've upgraded them to the obsidian versions. And I've still got a few upgrade slots in there to use. Although I did upgrade the gravel one. Because if we look there now, it's got about 1,400 stacks. And I've got more options there again. Because I can go further with the upgrades. But obsidian's the furthest I can go at the moment. So let's find the upgrade bit. No, it wasn't the upgrade. It was the... Let's do structure so you can actually see them. So here we have the obsidian one. Uh, the next level again is in stone. And then finally emerald. And that's going to give me 63 slots. Because right now I think I've got 31. So if I do want to upgrade, I'll probably do that. But I'll only use it on the necessary ones because later on we're probably going to have to code into the book. Let's see where were we now. After we've gone past this page we need to get into the darkness age. So here we have a frame quarry using funky locomotion. So that's something we're going to look on later on. And we probably have to upgrade all this. But in the bucket anyway, let's go back. Like I said, we've got to build a tier 5 altar and make a portal, kill a wither and create a set of wings. Now trying to get that wither is a major pain as you noticed last episode. Because I've got to try and find some wither skeletons. Now I've been thinking about that and Ender.io has, I think... Soul Vial, I think it was called. Was that the one? Yeah, Soul Vial. So if I can get hold of a wither in this Soul Vial, I'll probably be able to create a spawner. Now, you can't create basic spawners, but if I create a Ender.io spawning room, maybe it will work. I'm not absolutely sure. And to make one of them is fused quartz and some solarium. So to make some solarium we need some gold and some soul sands. Yeah, let's go and make that now. Just make it out the way. So we need some gold and some soul sands. So let me grab a couple of them. Some of them. See, the alloy smelt is the one we want, isn't it? So if we throw it in some of that. Oops, and a bit of gold. I'll we'll make two for now. Yeah, that's working. So while that's doing that, let's see what else we need. Fused quartz. I think I've got that in my transmutation table. Yeah, I have, right? Let's grab three, four, five, six. Right, has that done yet? Yeah, one of them's done. So let's make that. So I think it was like that. So one, two, three. There we go, one soul vial. And we just need the other one now. So it should be finished any second now. 
And there you go. Right. Let's finish this off. Where's that glass gone? Alright, one, two, three. Grab that. There we go. So if I see any with the skeletons over there, I'll probably capture them. And we're gonna have to build a special room I'm using a spawner. Oh, where's the spawner? Let's have a look at the recipe for the spawner. I think it's still in here somewhere. I can't find it, of course. I never can find them. Alright, let's try spawn. A powered spawner, that's the one. So to make one... Let's see now, a powered spawner. Now, there must be a way of using that soil vial. So let me have a look. See if we can actually do it, first of all. So free soil vial. Doesn't look like we're going to have much luck yet. So, vile. So, yeah, that could be a problem. <clears throat> I don't know what to do with that. Okay, let's try this. Uh, right, there's a flask of withering. I wonder if I can use with the skeletons for anything. Let's try that. No. Don't think we can actually. Uh, okay. Well, I'll work something out anyway. But there must be some method of getting some with the skeleton heads. Because there's no recipes for it. So I'm going to have to work on that, unfortunately. But uh, there's lots of work to do there. So, <laughs> let's have a look what we're going to do next. Now that's working fine. So, let's get upstairs. So in the fun next episode, we got to work on a few things. So I've got to develop this land a bit more. And I'll maybe pop over to the nether to see if we can capture a with the skeleton and see if there is some options down that road and finish off this room by adding a bit of a room a roof sorry and start filling this up with Britannia stuff because we've got to move all that stuff from down there up here and create myself a, a little battery for mana production and of course tidy up down there a little bit because that area I'm going to have for Steve's carts eventually and yeah lots of things to do so I'll come back we'll probably come back next up to see what I've been up to but I think that's it for today's episode so I hope you enjoy watching today and I'm telling you these guys in Project E are really overpowered so probably going to have a look at them as well. So I'll see you all next episode, everyone.